What's good, YouTube? It's your boy Vontae the first back again with another video all up in the sun, basking in the sunlight, sun coming in in the morning strong. Y'all already know, man. I do my reactions usually in the morning, so that's why that is the case. Um, it's warm though, I like it. Anyway, um, yeah, so it's Friday, it's not Sunday, so we're gonna be doing My Hero Academia right now. The officials actually dropped today, not the scans. I'm not doing scans, I don't do scans anymore. I'm doing the official translations, official chapters on Viz Media, Shonen Jump. You already know, man. And um, yeah, so My Hero Academia right now, and then we're gonna do Jujutsu Kaisen right after. Last chapter for My Hero was okay, I gave it like a six out of ten or something like that. Um, because it was I, right. it, it wasn't really nothing to you know, it wasn't really nothing really it was just showing us what had happened you know from the end of the prior chapter to that one with shigaraki with all the hands and shit and how he pierced miracle and then we basically see miracle in the last chapter just get her repairs or get her extra her spare arm and leg and her and bakugo have a little comedic back and forth and then just seeing everybody still fighting against shigaraki with all them goddamn hands and that was pretty much that first half of the chapter the second half of uh, the second half of the chapter basically was or not really even the half but the last pages was um just showing us what happened when deku got pulled into the portal by toga and she was just telling him she basically asked the boy out she said you want to be my boyfriend and he like what the fuck hey and also he was confused because he was like why the hell does my danger sense not work on her but we found out that it's because she shows you know affection through violence and pain and blood and all that kind of stuff but we already kind of knew that so it's interesting that horiko she did that was danger sense quirk i think is logical and it's just a cool Thing, it's just showing that Horikoshi obviously is very aware of um, his characters because that makes sense for that kind of encounter to, you know, for Toga to use what's normal to her, which is usually a danger for anybody else. But Deku can sense that because, like I said, it's, it's just norm. It's a norm for her. That's just how she shows affection. So, yeah, let's see what's going to happen in this chapter. I don't know what to expect other than a conversation between um, her and. Um, um, Deku, but let's get into it. Chapter 348, My Hero Academia. Iziku Midoriya was the ninth wielder of one for all. Okay, we got some narration. Okay, I haven't seen narration in a minute. I ain't gonna lie. I don't really remember the last time we seen a narration. I could be wrong, but I feel like the last time we seen it was like, I don't even know, man. Like, after the Christmas party? Nah, nah. nah. Uh, or before the, the raid in the, the first war arc? Maybe. I don't know. I might be forgetting, but yeah. Um, in the key to this particular battle. Since the advent of the extraordinary one for all had been the only power in Japan, no, in the entire world, that shadowy mastermind all for one obsessed over, and now the boy was the vessel for that very power. Mm hmm. He had encountered uh, Himiko Otoga a number of times by this point, but since she had never come right out and expressed her affection in words, he never realized the way she felt about him. Did you say boyfriend? He said, like, he was like, what the fuck? What the fuck do you mean? Because for all of this trial, uh, because for all of his triumphs, he still was just a damned hero, uh, nerd. <laughs> what are you talking about? I loved you since the moment I first saw you. <laughs> you were covered in blood and you just looked like my first crush. So <laughs> you're so cool, Izuku. Yeah, that's crazy. I forgot her crush did look like him. I remember seeing her like, why do you look like Deku? Look at her face. I'm loving the art that Horikoshi's doing with Toga right now. I fuck with that heavy. And I always say that when it comes to the villains, Horikoshi always be in the bag. I want to be you. So let me suck some blood. But boyfriend, like a guy you take to the amusement park for a date or who, who, who you hold hands with, who you split a crepe with. For me, turning into someone else is all about love. It's the only way I can feel satisfied. Second wave incoming. Watch out. Tell me, hero, what do you want to do to me? What the hell? Oh, yeah, he's asking the same question that, I mean, she's asking the same question that she asked uh, Ochako, right? I think she asked Ochako that, like, when they was trying to, you know, think about, like, how, like, what do you, how do you view me as a villain? Like, what would you do? I think she did ask her that in the war arc. Another attack is coming. Um, what did you do? What, uh, wait, what do you want to do to, yeah, uh, Ochako singing back to that, yep. I don't know, she can cloak her own presence if i lose her in the chaotic battle she'll be one step ahead i always wanted to be strong like all might so i get how you feel toga like how trying to be like someone else can feel fulfilling she doesn't trigger my danger sense so in that way this is the worst matchup i could ask for yeah but i can't imagine wanting to share the same heart yeah and that's all i'm saying like the danger sense and just her just you know her being toga you know um it just makes sense that's why i like that horikoshi added that because he even 
uh, Deku even admitted, like, yeah, this is, this would be the worst matchup because I wouldn't be able to tell if she's actually trying to attack me or not, you know, or if it's just through affection because, yeah, you never know. <laughs> um, I can't imagine wanting to share the same heart and mind as him. Um, and I would never want to hurt someone I love. I mean, look at her face. I'm loving this, dog. This is dope. Why can't you just be normal? Act like a normal little girl. She's thinking back to all the people just telling her that. How sad. And thinking about, uh, I forgot her name from um, the Liberation Front. I mean, not the, well, yeah, the Liberation Army. Uh, damn, I forgot her name. Damn, I forgot her name. Curious, curious. I think her name is Curious, right? Yeah. If you're going to live as you please, then you also have to live with the uh, consequences. And look at that panel, just showing her eyes. That's a dope panel right there. I like that a lot. That's a really cool artistic choice from Horikoti right, right there. Zuko, you're just like Otako and just like my mom and dad. Thoughts of Himiko Toga popped into my head. You think that heroes and those they protect are the only ones who count as real people? So people like you and I are destined to remain apart. Hmm. I like that she's getting like conviction, you know what I'm saying? Like from, from their answers, she's understanding more and more like the roles that both of them play in society. Well, really that they play in society and that and what she doesn't, she's not a part of society because she's an outcast. Just like a lot of the villains that we see in the series, they're technically outcasts because of whatever, you know? Um, because people look at them weird because of how they look or what they do because of their quirk and all this stuff. So, you know what? I feel that, I know this is probably like a, a very, um, you know um like basic prediction but like i feel like at, at some point in the series I, I don't know i feel like maybe quirks have to be written because it's like um like a lot of these people these villains and stuff they suffered and that's because and that's why they became villains because certain things didn't go a certain way and that just made them into a villain of course some of them obviously do think just bad shit just because they like to do it but a lot of times i feel like that the, the people's quirks really fuck with them like toga is a prime example of a quirk really fucking with them shigaraki a quirk that really fucks with them you know what i'm saying it's like it just makes it almost impossible for them to actually coexist with heroes so i feel like if you want to just lock them up you know that's not I, I don't know like i don't know how i feel about like if you just were to lock these guys up obviously they did bad shit I, i'm of course they're gonna have to get locked up but like at the same time that's not really bringing a real solution to a lot of these characters problems and stuff because they could either maybe break out of jail or never be reformed they could just stay in there and just never think differently and just suffer in that way you know what i'm saying or even if you try to kill them like of course you can kill them but at the same time what point is that actually proven to other villains that are in the same boat as them you know like a lot of these villains follow certain villains because of the similarities that they have like i know stain doesn't really fall into the outcast thing but like a lot of people follow stain because it's ideology so it's like there's a lot of other characters that or other villains that people would look up to just because it's like they've been through the same shit. You know, you can look at Toga, look at Spinner, look at Shigaraki and all that and see, or even Dobby now, because now everybody knows that he's Toya. So they could probably, you know, um, understand that it's probably a similar thing within, you know, him as well. So this is interesting to see, um, or just wanting to know what solution would they actually come up with, you feel me? Like, and I think taking away quirks or something, but I don't know how that would work either on the person. It may, it may make them even go crazier. I don't know, to be honest, but it is what it is. I think it's just good to think about that kind of stuff because it is a definite problem that Horikoshi is literally showing us throughout every arc. You know, he's showing us the problems with it and how heroes and villains just can't seem to coexist at all, you know? So I just want to see if he can find a solution or if that's just not um, something that Horikoshi is going for then okay but i just feel like it would be dope to try to see if he could find a solution at least for certain people you know like toga she's young as shit so it's like at least people like that that's like you know but i don't know who, who knows i'm just i'm just talking not so fast himiko toga ever since we met that day i've been thinking about uh, hard about you you haven't been on my mind not anymore <laughs> i thought maybe i had a shot with izuku but nope i'm all over that now udaraka the world rejected me so i reject the world otako is really it's sad, really. I mean, Toka has every right to, like I was just talking about, she really has every right to just feel the way that she feels. You feel me? Like, I know it's not an excuse to kill people and shit, but like, at the same time, her quirk kind of just makes her just, you know, lust for that. It makes her, it's like, that's just how she is. That's how she lives, you know? So it's like, I don't know. I feel that 
heroes aren't doing a good job with people like this. Like when you already pretty much know who Toga is and what she does and you know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like at some point, if you were to try to like, you know, rehabilitate her, you gotta actually, I don't know. I just feel like, and I'm not saying it's Deku or Otaku's fault. They're kids and they're trying to figure out stuff too. But I just feel like Hero Society needs to do better. And that's always been the thing in the series. Like the Hero City, uh, the Heroes Commission, they just been whatever, you feel me? So it's like, I don't know. But we'll see. I was so sure you understand. After all, you and I both feel for the game. Fell for the game. Hmm. Or the same. Either or. I don't know. I guess they both work. <laughs> um, I'll sue you, sue you. I mean, Froppy. Sorry it took me so long. Are you hurt? Nah, just a scratch. Better get that knife. She's the least predictable of our opponents. So we warped her to an isolated island. Too bad, uh, too bad, that, uh, too bad that plan backfired. Sue you. Get going, Deku. Chatting about romance here is the last thing you, you need to be doing. Hey, for real, Sue. Hey, she came in speaking facts. She said, De Deku, we got this. You can go. Go do your thing, man. We'll do what Him uh, Himiko Toga has planned. Gravity has gone up against her more times than anyone, so she'll take the lead here, and we'll get the job done. And I'll talk about looking back at Deku. Get Shigaraki. I guess both of us are kind of weird. Good luck. I already thinking about that conversation that they had trying to save or reform. Hmm... Okay, okay, I'm going to say something in a second. It's so hard to live being me, even though I'm full of all this love. Go now. Deck was going. Okay, what I was about to say from that right there, you know what I feel? I feel logically, I think one of, okay, so since Deku wants to pretty much save Shigaraki, even though he knows it might not be, you know, he might not be able to, you know, also Ochako, the same thing with uh, Hotoga. She, she wants to, but she feel like she might not be able to. I feel that one of them is going to get what they want and the other one isn't. I feel that, and it's kind of hard because we already seen glimpses of like um, Tenko within Shigaraki, like asking to be saved and stuff like that. And then with Toga, it's just like, you feel like she has redeeming qualities because technically she likes people. It's just the way that she goes about it is just different and crazy, you know? So I feel like Toga technically, when you really think about it, she might be easier to like reform and like rehabilitate because she's like, even though she's crazy, but it's like, it's, it's definitely a norm for her and she's accepted. But the thing is, is that she knows that society doesn't like her. or doesn't really want her within society, you know? And if they're rejecting her, then she said, okay, I'm just going to reject society. Like at least try to help me out. You know what I'm saying? It's like, that's kind of like what that saying, like you're rejecting me because I'm different. So I guess I'm just going to reject you because I'm different. I guess I just have to because you guys aren't trying to do anything to help me out or at least try to understand me or, you know what I'm saying? So and I'm not saying that she wants to be changed. It's just that she wants to be accepted. And that's the that's the issue within the series a lot of times. With any series in the world in general, a conflict when people have different perspectives and it's just always going to clash and there's no compromising with it. So I like that aspect of this story. Um, I feel that... I think Togo would be the one that would be saved, maybe. I feel like Shigaraki won't because Shigaraki is just, I feel like he's a little too more far gone. You know, he's already being this next, like, you know, warlord, not warlord, like demon lord. I mean, I, I know that's all for one, but I think technically Shigaraki falls under that too. Um, just the next big bad, you know what I'm saying? And not only that, but like, at this point, I don't know. I feel like there's going to be like a little fake out. I My prediction is going to be that, because remember, Deku was faced with either to kill Shigaraki or to save him. Like he personally wants to save him, but he might have to kill him. I'm thinking that Tenko or something is going to somehow, some way sabotage himself and end up pretty much off of himself. I feel like that might be the thing because I don't, I don't know. I don't really see Deku killing him per se. But I also don't see him being saved. It just wouldn't make sense for his story. I feel like somehow, some way, Tenko or Shigaraki, whatever, whichever part of him <laughs> is going to sacrifice himself to just stop it at this point. I think well, Tenko would be the one to actually, you know, be the catalyst to that. That's just my prediction, you know. For Toga, I feel like she could probably be, she could probably be saved, you know. They'll find a way to help her out, I think. I true, Truthfully, I think so. Then again, we might, I don't know, I might be, because this is something that I really think is going to happen. So I might end up being completely wrong. Who knows? But just by these little panels right here in the last page, I just feel like one of them is going to get what they want. The other one isn't. Or they might, they both might not. 
I just hope that they both that they both will. I don't really think that would make sense for the story. I think either Old Chaco or Deku's gonna get what they want in terms of saving the person that they want to save. But both of them know. But if they both don't, that would be interesting. I think that would probably be the best because it would just show to both of them that you just can't do that. You know what I'm saying? But they understand that they might not be able to, so that's good enough. Oh yeah, I didn't do my chapter rating. Uh, I actually really like this chapter because there's a lot to talk about, at least for me personally, with Toga and everything. Like this chapter, I feel like a lot of people probably think this chapter is just like the last one pretty much, or like the one with Ochako and her. I actually really like this chapter though. I didn't care about the fighting. It didn't really need to, I wanted to see this conversation. It was a cool little conversation. Um. I mean, to be fair though, the chapter, I mean, it's not like the chapter itself do, like dove in deep into like what I was talking about. It was kind of just me talking about it because the chapter kind of, you know, um, mentioned certain things that we already seen before with Ochako and Toga and Toga's pretty much reiterating that with Deku. So uh, it's stuff that we already knew, but for me, it just brought out a lot of conversation personally. So with that being said, I'll give this chapter a good seven out of 10. I'm gonna give it a seven out of 10 because it, it was, um, you know, it was cool. Uh, it brought out a lot of conversation for me for this video specifically. So I like that. And that's always gonna bump a chapter up, even if it doesn't have a lot of content, but like if there's something specifically within the chapter that, that I can talk about a lot, then it'll bump up the chapter a lot. Cause there's a lot of chapters that can have like jack shit in it and it didn't do shit for me. This is plenty of them, but this was one of those that didn't really have too, too much, but from the conversation that they did have, gave me more conversation or more to talk about to discuss. But yeah, man, uh, let me know down below how you guys feel, any predictions between this little conflict, this fight, or Deku being on his way back. You think it's gonna be some kind of, I don't know, something's gonna happen or whatever. Just let me know down below anything. Um, yeah um stay tuned if you guys are jujutsu kaiser fans it's coming up right up after this video you guys are probably gonna see it around the same time anyway i'll upload them at the same time pretty much but um yeah see you guys in the next videos and peace